Welcome to Cross Platform Podcast, where we discuss how to solve productivity problems across platforms. I'm Augusto Pinot. And I'm Mark Elwix. And today we're talking about journaling or are we journaling in video? I don't I'm not completely sure what if it's journaling <laughs> in video or we're journaling, but but for our listeners and those members of the Personal Productivity Club, I post my um, journaling stats in in there. And I will just share one number if you want to see more. But mm-hmm. according to, you want to see more, you can go, you can go there. But according to my application of, of choice, I have journal for 3072 days in this application good that's a lot of that is a long time that's a long time i don't have near those numbers (laughs) well okay so i I wasn't going to share this number but now you're going to make me brag out of those 3802 had been in a row wow all right, since you've got the mileage on this, let me ask you some questions. One, has it all been in the same app? All this is in the same app, yes. Okay, so which app is that? The app is called Day One. Okay. Uh, and I know that's one a, of the most most popular ones on iOS. It is, it is, it is, and it has evolved significant examples on the iOS, Mac. Um, um, it works very very well it allows you to create different journal books if you want to it allows you to do add attachments on it um i tend to uh, do an entry per day you know put lines on it um if i journal about different stuff but but it's been pretty solid before that i journal for a while on uh evernote um okay uh, I don't know where I journal before that. I don't. I I don't recall to be honest with you. I know, but I know a lot of people have used Evernote for that, and it's interesting. I want to I want to circle back to that in a little bit. The difference between a dedicated journaling app and using just a regular note taking app. But continue, please. Yeah, but it's been you know when you divide the numbers, it's basically been around eight years of journaling so okay um even i can i think i can go here let me see if that is a possibility the first entry in here is august 1st 2009 okay so that's the first entry i have in in day one all right so Tell me a little bit about your process of journaling. Is it is it a dedicated time you do each day? Is it stream of consciousness? Is it to record specific things? Tell me what the Augusto journaling experience is like. So I have a couple of different um, journal notebooks for, for color in a way. I have one that is just my journal and I try to go every day. I journal in the morning um, about what I'm, you know, what are my goals. And I journal at the night a little bit about what was the day and I refresh, you know, what are my goals. And I cover that in a book that I wrote that I called the Impact Journal. And the reason I do that is because I discover that when you look at the days, you know, many times, I used to go home and how was your day? Oh, terrible. And it wasn't that the day was terrible. Something that towards mm-hmm. the end of the day, something terrible happened. And then that I put kind of a sticker on the on the whole day. So when I come in home feeling those things, I tend to stop and say, okay, what make it, you know, terrible? What what was what actually accomplished that? And and a lot of times allow me to reframe the day. No, 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 it was not terrible. This particular moment, this particular thing was 
terrible, but not the day. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to reframe the day in a much different way. The other thing I do into that is I tend to write, especially, you know, I, I am even more stickler about that when I'm not feeling great, about three things that I'm grateful for. Okay. okay. And I try to be different. So every day I cannot write the same. And again, it's just to reframe where I am. And sometimes that process happens also in the middle of the day. You know, hey, you're coming to 2 p.m. and you're feeling beaten. Okay. Wait, why? Okay. And I open my journal. It's on every device. So it's very easy for me to access and journal a little bit. Other times come things a lot more specific. So, and I can give you an example. Um, or of a recent one, um, my kid uh, iPad is uh, getting to the point that it's um, very old and it's now out of support. There is no more updates. So do I want him to keep using that or do I want to upgrade that? Okay. And that is like one of those questions that we all come okay with mm -hmm. our technology or on our family technology okay um my dad called me four or five days ago uh because he had a problem with his computer okay should i fix or send to the technician a computer that is seven years old or should i put it in the trash and all the day and get a new one mm -hmm. and in that particular case well you know, for what he used, it may not be worth it to throw it in the trash. It may be worth it to fix it. I don't know. Okay, but it's that. Mm -hmm. it's, I tend to document those thinking processes so I don't need to have that idea 10 times because what it used to happen to me is I went and said, okay, what I'm going to do with my dad, I think about it, come on a conclusion, move on. Again, then something like that happened again. And it's like, uh, let me think it again because I don't remember what was the thinking process. Having the thinking process there allow me to come back and refresh. Um, the other thing that is very useful for me is um, being able to have things that I evolved. So we have talked here on the show about my technology card. Okay. My technology mm -hmm. card lives actually in my journal app. Okay, And when I look to review of them, I, I journal that on my, why? Because I can type on the search technology card and I can go back to the days that I was considering buying a Mac. Okay, 2009, mm -hmm. no, probably not. But I can get to the days that I was considering the first iPad Pro. Okay, and, but, and that information, you know, why? Okay, and recently happened that somebody recommend a device. The device was a Books Palma. Okay, and a Books Palma, for the people who don't know, it is a device like the Kindle, has an Android base, okay, but it's the mm -hmm. size of a phone. And this person who has recommended it to me bought it uh, to replace his Kindle and was very, very happy because it could take it into the pool, it could take it into many places, mm -hmm. but being a full Android device, he can do a lot more than it's not as fast as his phone, but he was okay with that. And, you know, I'm a geek at heart, okay? And shiny objects, you know, is my middle name. So when he said, that, oh, oh, God, I went. And mm -hmm. I remember I had thought about this device in particular already. So I went to the journal and put the name of the device on top and boop, in fact, came the paragraph and then why I decide not to even test that device. And actually, it was the, the, the reason why not test the device came after one of these shows because we were discussing about another book's device that I bought and how disappointed I was that it could not compare with my iPad. And what we discussed is, well, that's one of the issues in these devices is they, they are very good for a very specific thing. But if you don't think it well enough, as I did not, okay, what happened is they fell short. And yes, if you want to replace your Kindle and you don't care for the other features, that device is great. 
that device is not fast, powerful enough to replace my iPad mini. Mm -hmm. So, but having that thought process there allowed me to read the paragraph or two that I wrote about it, okay? And there was no need to spend one, one cycle of thinking into that. It's interesting listening to you describe this because a couple of things jump out at me. One, you and I have very different definitions of what a journal is. Um, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just the, no. the word sounds like it has a very different definition between the two of us. Um, a lot of the things you're describing, I would expect to see in just a regular note-taking system, you know, a daily note-taking system where you're, you're capturing all your thoughts, you're capturing activities, you're, and then being able to reference and, and recall them. Um, so that's that's interesting that it's that deep of a system for you. Uh, it almost has little bits of a Zettelkasten type of feel, or it has, and I can I can see now why using something like Evernote or, originally made sense. You know, as you evolved into another application uh, because of that open structure and all. So that's mm -hmm. that I find fascinating because to me, the open note systems, things like a OneNote or an Evernote or something like that. I've tried in the past using those for journaling and I've never been happy with them. But my definition of journaling is different than regular note taking because journaling for me is a very personal thing. No one gets access to that journal. No one needs to yeah. see it. No, yeah, there needs to be no interaction. The only person who will ever interact with it is me and rare rare do I ever need to go back through the entries? I can, and occasionally I do, but it's not like there's reference materials or anything that I put in there. It's, I, I like to refer to it as my anti-social media. Um, all, <laughs> all the things that so many people instinctively will like throw out onto a Twitter or they'll throw out into a, a thread or into Reddit to get feedback and interaction. Well, I don't do that. They don't go out there, but not, not those types of thoughts. So I put them into the journal app that I use. I use an app on, um, on windows and on Android, uh, called journey. And I've used journey okay. for quite a while. Uh, I like it because it's a very straightforward app. It's easy to do text entry. Uh, it will take multimedia or media files. So you can put pictures in there and things like that. But I do like it for the fact that it's easily accessible on whatever device I'm using. So it's always on my phone. I have a copy on my tablet and it's all the centralized storage is backed up in my Google Drive uh, rather than on their servers. So I know I won't lose the information that I have in there. But as I said, I'm not expecting anybody to to access it. Uh, matter of fact, the intention is that they not. So that from a journey, from a functional standpoint, it sounds like the, the difference is, is clearly defined in there. So let's talk a little bit more about what, but let what me, is... Go ahead. Let me say something before, because nobody accessed this. Okay, nobody's meant to okay. read this, and, and I hope nobody ever read that. Okay? And the only moment I come into this back i don't i don't write and say oh let me see what is on the past okay mm -hmm. unless i'm doing very specific you know there are very and i give you very specific examples of those but the reason for that is because for me it is a thinking place okay it is okay. it is an antisocial a place where i discuss the stuff that i don't want anybody to know i, I like that thing. but also it's a play a place where i want to think and where mm -hmm. I want to, you know, one of the things that I explain to people and in, in many things, in many areas is that if you think mentally, the problem is your brain goes too fast and you miss details. Okay. When you force yourself to slow down, okay, typing or handwriting, I cannot handwrite because I cannot read it later. Okay, defeat mm -hmm. the purpose. It's, it's a classified document. Okay, all redacted. Nobody will be able to read anything about it. <laughs> but the reason is it forced me to slow down. And there are moments even that I go to pen and paper or the digital note pen on the yeah. iPad 
just because I need to go even slower to to capture the stuff. Now, what's what's interesting is for me, it's the exact opposite, because the longest journal entries I have are the ones where I use speech to text. And I'll start that on the keyboard. I start the entry and I literally just talk to it as if it were someone else. And I, and I say everything that's on my mind and it's stream of consciousness and there's, you know, there's no organized structure or anything like that. I find often if I start to type things, I'll type shorter things, especially if I'm in situations where I can't, you know, talk out loud. Um, but I start to put more structure in it and you have that habitual, oh, well, that should be a comma. That shouldn't be, a, you know, you, you start to fix things. And I realize that there's no reason to fix things on this. This is completely no. for me. But that that step of being able to do that speech to text on the app and be able to just get it out of my head, um, that I think for me is the biggest benefit of it. Again, it's not an archival system. It's not a it's not a recall or a knowledge based system. It's a it's got to live someplace. This this thought has to be somewhere, and it's either going to be in the digital journal or it's going to be in my head. And the best place is that it's not in my head. So I got to put it someplace else. Um, but yeah, I use that all the time. Now, here's here's an interesting question. Do you use digital? Is, is it all typed or do you do digital ink? Mostly typed. Mostly okay. typed. The reason why I ask is because I was doing a search just on the Android side of digital journals in the Play Store before we came on. And there's a few, not many, but there's a few that are digital ink based. And I could I could see doing digital ink as well i mean that to me would make perfect perfect sense especially for the types of of journaling that i do um because again it's not really searchable it's not referenceable or anything like that so you could use an application like a samsung notes or something and take handwritten notes on the on the tablet which is what we're all about here and be able to have that and capture that uh, so i've i know i've done that in the past I just have found that it's not it's not as efficient for the sudden stream of consciousness things. So so I'm gonna say I touch type. So that is an advantage. Yeah, and, I'm not quite that fast. And I can close my eyes and type. Oh, okay, see so now you're showing off. I, I... <laughs> no, but it but it's part of the process because yeah. It is, I don't, you know, if I feel, okay, that I'm very judgy at what I'm writing, mm -hmm. then I can close my eyes and just continue typing. The typing exercise, even if errors come into screen and all that, that I don't necessarily care, okay, but that continue forcing me to slow down because I cannot type as fast as I can talk or think. Right. And that's and that makes a lot of sense for like when I use the the browser app for Journey, um, it that's all keyboard that's sitting there and typing it down and and that there's a structure there to that and it has the same kind of feel again as if I were going to be posting something. Um, I I consider that my like I said my anti social media so it's being posted to myself. And I and I write it that way as if I'm posting it to myself and stay and making it out loud. Um, but I'll also go through a lot of times. A lot of the entries uh, look like conversations. You know, I'll be asking and answering my own questions, uh, well, going back and forth, or or being able to identify questions I can't answer. Uh, I do like a couple of the aspects of the application. It automatically captures where I am. It captures the weather and the time of when I'm making the recording and allows me to identify my mindset as part of the entry too. So those, those are all nice aspects of it. They're not, they're far from critical. Um, I'll never look something up based on the weather or based on what, on what my mood was. Um, but it's that, it's that type of thing. Now there's others that I've looked at. There was one called, I think it was called Dalio that leaned very heavy into the mood and mindset tracking. Uh, even more so than the actual, you know, capturing your writing and things like that. And there's a lot of there's a lot of them out there. If if somebody's interested in doing digital journaling, uh, there's an app out there, guaranteed. Yeah. There, matter of fact, there's it's 
it's not as bad as note taking or task management, but there's enough of them out there that you can try a whole slew of them um, and go back and forth and, and settle into something. But I would say, and based on the numbers that you shared at the beginning, I think this is kind of reinforced. The most important aspect of journaling and the greatest benefit from it is by doing it consistently. Um, it, it, and it's I okay think... to, to randomly do it, but making it one of those habits, or I'm not going to say habit because that would annoy Ray, um, make it a routine. It's one of those things that you get that recurring benefit then. And I think that's what it is. And and when people, you know, as a coach ask me, well, what do you recommend about journalists? And the only thing that it matters is that it's consistent. You know, you can draw. And there is a guy who he goes by uh it's Homer Cloud and he goes by Gapping Boyd on the website. And he start his journaling making drawings on the back of a business card. Okay. And he made a very good yeah, make a very mm -hmm. good living now doing that, but that was not his intention. That was a journaling exercise. The journaling exercise is not about the text or the handwriting or the drawing. It's about being able to find center again, okay? And mm -hmm. center means different things from different people, and it means the ways to get there are different for different people. What, what it matters, I think, is the consistency. What is what you need? You need to record yourself in the phone? Do that and save it somewhere. This is supposed to be private. This is supposed to be for you. And no, you don't need to read it ever again. Mm -hmm. You don't need to listen to it ever again. What matters is getting into that habit, you know, where, where now you feel stress out in the middle of the day, okay? And mm -hmm. you can come, pop up, and, you know, do two, three sentences and bring you back to where you're supposed to be. That, I think, yeah. is the what makes journals so precious. And the other Interesting. thing... Interesting. Before, before you leave that, though, that uh, there's something that... Tying that into your state of mind, figuring out the trigger that compels you to journal, I think goes a long way to that consistency piece. Because I know, I know myself included, a lot of people struggle with setting a specific time to journal. You know, it's kind of like doing the weekly review in GTD. You know, people just struggle with finding that slot. But if you find the trigger that necessitates the journal entry, that's that becomes the consistency then because you are consistently recognizing that trigger. So it's it's a inconsistent consistency. That makes any sense. Go ahead. And and it's and it's important that consistency. It is what allows you to to really get a very hard to define value out of the journaling part. And mm -hmm. the other thing is there is no right or wrong way. To journal the only you know the only thing is do it you know hey maybe your consistency is not every day maybe your consistency is once a week maybe your consistency is every other day mm -hmm. that's fine okay there is no right or wrong way to do it there it doesn't matter if you draw if you paint if you record if you put audio it's irrelevant what matter is come and review the thoughts and come and review and break the cycle of thoughts Okay, because one of the things we do with the journaling is break cycles, okay, of thought. Good, the, the good ones doesn't matter, okay? If you wake up today and thinking, you know, oh, I'm great, okay, and I'm doing great, and everything is working mm -hmm. great, hey, don't break it, okay? But that's not how most people wake up, okay? That only happened in the Lego movie, okay, where the guy wake up and <laughs> everything's everyone, awesome, everything is awesome, okay? The rest <laughs> of us, Okay, have complexities through the day and the week. Yeah. And many times we go into a down spiral. Okay. You make a mm -hmm. mistake. Okay. And now you go from I make this mistake to all that I do is wrong to I'm always making mistakes. Break those cycles. And that is what journal allows you to do. 
as I was saying at the beginning of the show, I look every day, okay, especially critically when I'm feeling, oh, today was a very difficult day. I'll stop. You know, and that's what you say. It's a trigger. Mm-hmm. Okay, today's a very difficult day. Stop. Okay, why today was a very difficult day? And yes, I guarantee you from 2009 to today, and even before that, there has been some days that has been very difficult days. Okay, but most yeah. of them are about something that happened, something mm-hmm. very specific. And when you can pinpoint that, now, I'm not saying your day is going to be better. No. Okay. But now you know why. And, and that's, that's changed a lot. That's a huge thing, especially, I'll isolate it out, especially for men. Men struggle with with identifying those triggers that are creating stress that are creating issues for them because we're very good at the water off a duck's back kind of mindset. It's a thing. It happened. It ticked me off and now I'm moving on. We're never going back and saying, okay, it's ticked me off multiple times. Well, why is that? Well, I did. I, if I think about it, I didn't even realize it had happened multiple times, but it did. And something like a journal is extremely powerful in giving you that perspective over time. The problem is, is that many people, and especially men, have a challenge with saying, I'm going to sit down and write things down because they immediately equate journal to diary. And it's like, well, okay, let's let's clarify a couple of things. If you go back to like the founding fathers, Everybody kept a diary and that's what they called it. They didn't call it journals. They called them diaries and everything they did and all their daily activities and everything were recorded there. Why? Because there's no place else to record it. You know, you weren't, you weren't tweeting out what you had for lunch or, or taking a picture of that night's steak and putting it up on Instagram. So you had no other record of what daily life was like. But when I look at applications like what we're talking about here, ones that can be put on your phone and kept with you. And, and that's the only place they live. And, you know, maybe they have their own pin and maybe they have, you know, fingerprint recognition to get into them. That becomes a safe place to be able to go in. If you don't feel like you have a safe place to have those conversations, which is a whole different conversation we need to have. Um, But if you don't feel like that, that journal can become that place to be able to say, yeah, you know what? Today sucked. I had to deal with Bob at work again, and he did this again. Well, you're not going to send that out in an email. You're not going to post that on social media. And honestly, most people are, are very hesitant to write anything like that down into a place where somebody else may get a hold of it and may use it against them. Well, that's where this type of a thing can actually be that, that safe place for you. Um, I think it's really, it's really important. Now with, with digital journaling specifically, I think you have an, a unique opportunity to provide yourself that, that rolling capture of your life, being able to do things. Like I said, um, journey gives me the ability to capture, um, media files into it. So I can put a video file in, I can put a photo in it. Yeah. All my photos, my videos and all, they all go up into, you know, Google photos and things like that, but I don't want every photo in there. And if I take a photo in journey, it doesn't automatically go up to the cloud. I would have to actually designate it. And there's a shortcut on my phone's desktop to take a photo to send it to journey. So it means now I can go through things and like, you know, if I'm going through a store and something strikes me as funny, but it's just me that's find finds it funny. I can take a picture of it and put it in my journal and that's it. That's as far as it has to go. I don't feel like I have to have the validation of that in a public forum where this type of journaling or, or diary system, something like that really gives you that opportunity to eliminate that public forum. Is well, there any? Um, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I was thinking, ask a different question. And, I, and I forgot who the person is. Years ago, I read somebody who also is a user of day one or was a user of day one. And they create a journal for their kids. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then every time they take a picture, similar to that's what made me thought about it. 
Okay, when there were pictures of the kid, he just uploaded them randomly in the journal. It wasn't necessarily journaling, but at the end of the year, mm -hmm. then he will print that journal with the pictures. Okay, and he said there were so many things that otherwise you lost. Okay, I have Lord knows how many pictures on my phone. Do I go to my phone and look at the pictures of this year? No. Okay, but he did into that, and then it printed, and then that allows them to see, you know, the pictures that way. It's an interesting use of journaling again. Now that's that actually raises an interesting thought for me because I hadn't, excuse me, I hadn't thought about that before. We always habitually you know, productivity people will try to put that into their standard note taking system or they'll put it into you know if you think like family photos you want to take family photos the first instinct is to share them well you know what if you go to any activity any event anything like that and there's 12 people taking photos of the exact same scene so that photo's out there but maybe you want the photo with your your comments about that what it made you feel what struck out to you Mm -hmm. being able to put that directly into your own journal and have that capture. And then depending on the app, like journey, for example, allows you to tag entries. So to be able to tag it, uh, like say with my grandson's name. So if I put a note in hit there about him, I want to tag it with him. So then I can go back and say, show me everything tagged Arthur. Right. Show me everything that was a food. Because those are things that again, I'm, I'm never going to, I'm, they don't need to go into something like OneNote. There's no purpose for them there. Um, I've been going through an exercise as of late of looking through a lot of my notes. And a lot of the notes that I've captured over the years are completely wasted efforts. They were valuable at the time, but it's this you know pile of digital flotsam that's following me around. And a lot of those are just like, yeah, it's I don't need that. But those journey ones, those journal entries are the ones that if I'm 20 years from now, would it give me pleasure to be able to go back and, and read it, look at it, understand it? Would it give me deeper understanding of me? Would it give me an opportunity to have context in my world? And I think that that's what goes in there. That's the type of thing that fits in there. So in, in your app, in day one, What's your favorite feature of it? Do you have a, a favorite feature? And if so, what is it? You know, you made me think about that. I think, I don't know if I have a favorite feature. Um, I like that I can have multiple notebooks. Um, I think for me, it's availability. I love the fact that I can open any of my Apple devices and I will find it there. Mm -hmm. The um, the journey app for me has an interesting. It, it's not a it's not a feature I use very often, but it is a it's a nice built in feature. And it's because when you create an entry, it stamps it with the weather, the time, you know, those basic things. It'll also, as a feature, you can turn on. It'll do a location stamp where you recorded that entry, where you were when you physically recorded that entry. And I like that because it combines with the photos. So it's very similar to the, the geolocation-based photos in like Google Photos, for example. You say, you know, I was at, you know, I was in Washington, D.C. Show me the photos that I've taken there in Washington, D.C. The difference is, is something like Google Photos, you have a photo. In your journal... You have your photo and your thoughts. What did what did that photo make you feel at that point? If you capture both at the same time, you have that that snapshot in that period, which I think is a neat. It's a neat kind of feature. Um, again, I don't use it very often, but it does provide some interesting perspectives when I go back and I look at things. So. When you think about, now you do all your journaling on your iPad, right? Or where, do, where do you do the, the lion's share of your journaling? I would say most of my journal happen on the iPad, but my iPad is my main machine, okay? I probably mm -hmm. spend more time on the iPad than any other device. Right. Um, 
even that I'm going to say that the Vision Pro has been taking more and more of my time, uh, device wise. Um, but but it happened there. But I but again, it's Apple centric, so I can use it on on the iPad. I can use it on the phone. I can use it on uh, on the Vision Pro. Most I would say device one and two will be the iPad and and the Vision Pro for journaling. Um, I love the fact that I can open, you know, the multiple screens on the Vision Pro and one of them can be journaling. Okay. Do you keep your journey or your journal open all the time? How close to you is it at any given time? No, no, it's not open. You you may think about that for a moment, but no, it's not open all the time. But it's open often. Um, okay. Because if I feel, you know, even I have a category on my system, my productivity system, things to think of or journal. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's maybe the reason it's open, you know, because there are moments that I, that, you know, I go into that list, go into that context and look what is in there. Is there anything that I want to think about? And some, and most of those things, unless you think that a mind map will be more appropriate, for thinking um, or planning, it's normally gets into my journal application. So let's say, for example, someone's going, okay, I can see the value. I want to get into this. I want to start. We already said consistency is key. At least, you know, use the journal. What would be your other main piece of advice to somebody who's wanting to start journaling and reaping some benefits from it make it your own what okay. is what you need do you need a place to to course do you need a place to complain you need a you know and actually it was funny because before in the pre-show we were joking about it and and i you know you asked me how was your day so nothing to complain or, or or maybe i will not complain and your answer was well, well you can always open the journal okay and and mm -hmm. if that's what you need at this moment that's fine okay where where do you what is what you need don't think on what this tool need to be think on what you need because this can transform and have moments where it is incredibly great and moments that are going to be incredible sad and it's fine mm -hmm. that it contains everything. Okay. I, over the years has, I think I have very few journals when I'm very, very, very incredibly happy, okay? but mm -hmm. I have a lot of them. Okay. That are for those moments where I have been very stressful, very unhappy, very sad. That has been a tool. So, don't think on well what I'm going to get out of this tool. Think what do you need right now? Well, do I need mm -hmm. a friend? Great, let's make the journal your friend. Well, do you know what? I'm struggling with business. Great, let's make this the place where you're going to come to talk about the business issues. And many times, I think this is worse on men than female. Mm -hmm. Okay, we male tend to not talk that much about what is coming. Oh, okay. Absolutely the, not. Okay. And um, this is a great tool for that. Nobody need to read it. Nobody need to know it exists. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it will allow you to take it out of your chest. Okay? We are very bad. Okay. About that. And, you know, over the years, I have asked my wife, this was something hard for me to learn. When she, the part of the reason we don't talk male is because if I come right now and tell you, Art, I have a problem with my technology, okay? And, and it's nothing, okay? Art brain immediately mm -hmm. will get into gear and say, oh, let's solve a problem, yes. Right. Okay? And no, 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 I don't want to solve the problem. I want to complain about it and I want to, you to listen, mm -hmm. but I don't want any solution. We, yep. male in general, are awful about asking that oh, yeah. because it feels that we are weak, right? Then make your that's, journal. That's the that way. Place. 
that's the way we've been taught from birth. That's the way that has been societally reinforced. It is a, it is almost insurmountable at times to get around that. It is truly, you know, you, you force that flip into that problem solving state. And that's why I think something like a digital journal on your phone, a dedicated app that that's all this one does. That's what its functionality is, can be really helpful, especially for men, because they're not as self-conscious about typing something on their phone because they're using their phone all the time anyway. And right. if, if those things that you're capturing, they aren't novels, you know, you're not capturing page after page after page. If you're capturing, you know, a few thoughts here, a few thoughts there, it doesn't look any different than anything else you're typing in. Right. But and at the least then thing... you've got it. You've got an opportunity to have that conversation with yourself. Correct. And there is a big difference and you can, you can, Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I feel there's a big difference between having that whole conversation inside your head and the, having that conversation outside your Out. head. There is, there is. And that was the reason I was saying early, I like to force myself to type. And if I need to think more deeply and write, because I need to force myself to slow down on that thinking. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing I was going to say, and this has been something that has been very useful for me, not with me and not with journaling, but learn as a male, ask male and female, do you need me to listen or do you need me to solve? Oh, yeah. Okay? And, yeah, and funny enough, question. I have a client, I have a client who we come into the into the coaching sessions, okay, to listen. Okay. He mm -hmm. has a specifically I ask one day that question and he starts laughing and I say, I never thought about this. And yes, I just want you to listen. And he comes for an hour, once a, mm -hmm. twice a month, okay, for me to, to vent. Okay? He don't want me to help other than say, mm -hmm. okay, once in a while. Okay. But he is suspect. And when he wants feedback, he say, now I need to fit back into this. Okay. And other than that, the instruction is I'm listening and not saying a word about this. And it's exactly what you said. He feels he have nobody to go that way even you don't feel comfortable typing okay mm -hmm. now your phone if it's an android your phone if it's an iphone you can use the voice memo if you want it in voice or you can use mm -hmm. the type the dictation and will convert it into text so it will allows you yep. to do all that what is important is to get it out of the chest to feel that you are having yeah. an external conversation instead of an internal one. Now, the the thing that I would suggest to anyone, doesn't matter whom, who's starting this is journaling can become, I want to say very self-reinforcing. It's easy to get going down a path of, you know, always capturing the negative things that you ran into the day, you know, the, the bad things that happened. You need to make sure that you capture all You're different good. kinds of things. Um, and this is this is interestingly related to a conversation that I had with my mother when my father passed away and she was in her house by herself and all. And in the early days of it, she struggled quite a bit with, you know, what what the, I'm like, OK, you need to write it down. Take a journal, get a book. And I actually I bought her a, a paper journal and a nice pen, I said, just write down each day what you're thinking, what you did, what chores did you do? What are the, because at the point she was at, she needed to see over time that life was continuing, mm -hmm. that the struggles she was now dealing with were intermixed with regular everyday life. And not that those were the only things that were happening in her world. And to this day, uh, my father's been gone four years now. Uh, she's still doing it on a daily basis. She still journals and she has now she's written them, you know, handwritten in paper books, which is absolutely a viable thing. Uh, and that's something that I think certain people will gravitate more towards. But I find I find the digital side, especially since that's that's our world, to me is more has a lower bar of entry 
than something more yep. formalized to a to a written journal and something a written journal a, a paper analog written journal has a much greater sense of permanence to it in my mind um, you can't just arbitrarily go through and delete the app and make it all go away um, it's a it's a much stronger commitment to the things you're writing down and i think that creates a lot of hesitancy for some people so yeah. as we as we kind of bring this all the way around um, do you see yourself journaling forever to maintain this, this pace that you've had and, and everything else, or are you seeing diminishing returns from it? What, what do you see as no, the future of Augusto's know, journaling? For me, at least until today, journal is an invaluable tool. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not only analyze what happened bad, you know, look what happened well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even recently, recently, maybe six months back, but recently, okay, I was having doubts about a project I was doing. Okay. And I went there, okay, into, and I begin the, the journaling in the sense, in the lines of, you know, almost, almost, you know, I'm failing at this. And then mm -hmm. when to be able to go from that line, okay, and work myself out to, you know, we, we have a, an obstacle and, you know, it seems pretty big, but it's still workable. And let's make it, let's make it mm -hmm. and fix it. And those kind of things are invaluable for me. I There's a big project for me starting August this year and um, or may start August this year. I, I don't know yet for sure, it, but it's not on my hands. But all the mm -hmm. thought process for that project, who, if I was worth it to go back to school, not go, worth it to go back to school for this, was all documented in there. Do I have intentions to go back? No. Okay, but during the time that I was processing that thinking and I was evaluating all those options, it was very useful to be able to search okay mm -hmm. the keyword and go back and say, Oh yeah, this is oh yeah, this is okay. We had, you know, as a parent, things that happen with your kids, okay, that things that happen to your parents, okay, problems. For me, the journal is a place for problem solving. That's what mm -hmm. it is for me, okay? And and it contains my goals, yes. It contains, you know, sometimes you look like, okay, well, you know, I have accomplished this goal. What's next? Mm -hmm. Okay? And for a lot of people, it's not that they don't think what what's next. They do here. But they don't externalize it, okay? What happened when you said, and this happened to me recently, Again, recently could be in the last year, but okay. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, I was talking about a number for a project, and the person I was discussing said, "Well, why? Why that number and not double of that number?" And I was like, "Well, because I thought that number was ridiculous enough, <laughs> you know, to right. be honest with you." But then now I went back. Okay, and ask myself that question. I capture and ask myself that question. Why you are setting this limit when this could go much higher? What tools yeah. do you need to go much higher? And that's the kind of things that I want to have there. I may never, ever look back. But I'm going to say my tech technology card lives in there. Okay, mm -hmm. And it's been an invaluable tool, okay? And it's really invaluable to search technology card and see how many of them I have over the years, okay? That goes from the first Mac that I bought, okay, to the moment I went iPad only, to further, okay? Why did I, why did I decide to iPad only, okay? And I can go and look into that thinking process. Oh, yeah, because you, there are many things that you don't remember. 
Okay. Why mm -hmm. did I? Okay. I, I have in the case of the iPad only, I have told the story multiple times, so I remember it. Okay. But it may happen. Why? Why did you buy the mini instead of the larger one? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I can tell you. It's, I can tell you only because it's documented. So, and and it happened to me on the last upgrade for my iPad mini, where I finally upgraded. And when I got the new iPad mini, I say, I need to remember that the iPad mini is not an iPad Pro. And when the new one comes out, I should update because their life cycles are more shorter. Okay, mm -hmm. great. I went to the technology card and add that line. Okay, so when I review my technology card, even if I don't modify anything on it, Okay, if I review that card, I it will say where says the iPad Mini says remember this device needs to be updated every time Apple updates it because otherwise they die very soon after that and you're running to upgrade. But mm -hmm. those are the kind of things that I want to have there that for me are very, very useful. Okay, things that agreements that you have come to yourself. What made you get to that agreement? In mm -hmm. the moment you decide, you know what? I'm going to take care of this. Okay. Do you remember why? I don't. Okay. I need to search for it. If I need to remember, okay, why did I decide to to change, you know, this and this is an example I mean, we have discussed here in the show. I'm sitting in in a seat, in a chair, not in a regular office chair. Okay. And the moment I made that decision. Okay, it's documented. Well, I will search. Why did I stop using a chair, an office chair? Most likely not. Okay, mm -hmm. but if I ever, you know, question why did I change this? Why? What was in my mind? I can go and find out what was in my mind about, mm -hmm. it. and that has an incredible value for me. Yeah, that's <clears throat> thinking about it. I've got a number. A number of notes in my regular note taking system that have been spawned from thoughts and discussions I've had with myself in my journal. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no connection between the two. I don't feel the need to Correct. put a link from one to the other or anything like that. But I'll be having that discussion. It's like, yeah, I should look into that and then go make a note or go make a task or to do because that's that's a conversation with me. And that's where I think the value really is. Um, so for anybody who, who wants to start digital journaling, the other piece of, of advice I would do, <laughs> stay away from places like Pinterest and things like that. Don't, <laughs> don't go and Google or, or YouTube search how to digital journal because all you're going to find is all these ways to be judgmental about what you're the process you're you're supposed to be doing. There is no, as you mentioned earlier, there is no right way to do this. There is no wrong way to do this. You just need to do it. Just start and start going through. Once you get get going with it, if you want to find ways to enhance it or maybe ideas to improve it, that's that's fine. That's a different conversation to have. But at the very beginning, don't try and and figure out what's the right way to get started. You're just you'll never start. You'll you'll go through a week of it. This is the typical life cycle. You'll go through a week, maybe two, and then you'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. And usually you'll blame the app that you're using that somehow it's not working right for you or or it just doesn't mesh and either you'll never do it again or you start app hopping to find, you know, the right one to do it. And it's not changing the fact. Think about it this way. If you were not doing it digitally, you were just doing it on a plain sheet of paper or a regular journal. There's no structure there. There's nothing else. It's, it's a plain sheet of paper and a pen. Well, treat this that same way. So. It's the same way. And, and, and it made me think for productivity specifically. And I understand that's what I eat and drink, but do I get, you know, I said shiny objects is my middle name. Okay? When they come and journal a thing, oh, new application. Ooh. Again. But that's the moment instead of jumping into the application, 
let me journal about it. Let me go into the process, into yeah. the exercise, into journal. Why do I want to change that? Why do I want to, you know, and I mentioned the books, okay, that the device, okay, it was otherwise, okay, in the, if I will have not that record, okay, with your now, there is a quote in that record was talking about you, okay, specifically because it was discussed in this show. And otherwise, I will have spent a couple of hours looking at, um, specs comparing okay yes why do i need it it's not even the money okay i mean let's ignore the money part for a moment it is those two hours that i will have spent thinking about it okay justifying it okay mm -hmm. and then i will have get the device okay spend let's say another three to four hours so that's six hours okay testing the device blah 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 and as soon as that novelty will wear off i will be like oh, why did i put this now okay i save myself okay with that six hours mm -hmm. if nothing else okay six hours in the class cost of the device okay if that doesn't make it worth it for you it make it very worth it for me you know i i have lists okay things i do not do okay? mm -hmm. there is a bunch of them Okay. But those things, before they made it to the list, they were journal. Okay? Yeah. Why do I not wash my car? Again, I have told the story. I can tell you why. Okay, But it is journal. Okay? Because when the next time I say, why do I stop checking my email in the morning? I can mm -hmm. find it. What was the thinking process? And even I can change my thinking process. That's fine. I can say, you know what? This was valid on the year I wrote this, but now my life has changed in this and this and this way. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now you know why you decide to do it in a certain way instead of, uh, I don't know. And and journals really are not problem-solving places. And that I think that's probably the biggest delineation is if you have a challenge, you're not trying to solve that challenge in your journal. You're, you're trying to understand where you are, why you are with that challenge. But when it comes mm -hmm. to the actual mechanisms, you know, the, the problem solving techniques, mind mapping, whatever, that makes more sense in other places, at least to me. Now, again, journaling is probably the most personal thing you can do in the digital space. Uh, and it should be. And it should be yours and it should work the way you want it to. So don't let anybody, including us, tell you how you should be doing it and what should go. I know some people who the only thing they journal is their health stuff. They journal their physical condition, their health, everything like that, because they want that record and that that gives them that sense of control. And I think that's great. Um, but yeah, find something, find, find a way, find a reason. Uh, it's, it was a long time for me to, to truly start to appreciate the value I get out of it, but that was because I had to find the mechanism that worked for me. So mm -hmm. any and, last thoughts? That, that for me, that last word that you said is the most important part. What works for you? I know people who do it on pen and paper. I know people who do it on post-its. Okay. That's fine. What? Is mm -hmm. what works for you. There is no right or wrong way to do any of this. Exactly. That is exactly the case. There is no right or wrong way. There is no, there is no piece of this that you should be looking at it and say, man, I guess I'm just, I just don't understand how to do this. If you're doing it, you understand it. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other final thoughts or shall we wrap it up nope. for the day? I think this is it. So with that, follow us where you like to listen to podcasts, like us or subscribe to us and leave us a review. Tell us, you know, you can go to personal productivity club to the channel for cross platform and tell them what is your favorite app? What is your favorite device? How do you journal? Did you journal? And share a little bit with us. We are Gusto Pinot mm -hmm. and Argel Weeks. See you next time on your favorite device.